I was going on, ladies and gentlemen. So today, you know, we got, you know, some guests. Now, I know you remember the brother, uh, the elder priest of Bar from the House of Israel. If I'm saying that wrong, he correct me, of course. He always got to correct me on some things. You know how I am with names, um, with the Southern accent at times, right? But um, let me go ahead and bring everyone in because they want to share some things with y'all. You know, the brother was on here, you know, a while ago, um, putting in the work out there in, in these uh, evil streets of Babylon. Um, that they constantly preaching in. So, priest, what's going on, brother? Shalom, shalom, shalom. Priest Sabak, H O I to the chariots fly. All praises to the Most High. Yeah, I was shy. Let my brothers introduce themselves. Yeah, uh, uh, all praise to the Most High, man. My name is Jeremiah, the House of Redeemed Servant, located out of Oklahoma City. And uh, we have an incident that took place in Oklahoma City. Uh, with this brother's daughter at uh at at their middle school mm -hmm. oh, elementary at elementary school and um what what took what took place is a homework assignment was given and um in this homework assignment a video was attached to the homework assignment okay this is your child's work Click on this right here. Okay. Hi guys, it's Mrs. Hardy. I'm going to be giving Turn you directions today for what to do with this circle thing you that I made it. for yeah. you. And um, this wrong? is part of review and getting ready for a CFA on what you know about the three regions of the colonies. And... Um, yeah, so this is part of your review, and we will be taking a grade on it. So up here, this says, do this first. I kind of was writing out directions on how to do the actual cutting and gluing, and I forgot to tell you what the task was. So in each of these sections of the circle, you're going to draw and color and label small images uh, to show what you have learned about each colonial region. And you want to focus on how they are different, okay? Um, so we have the New England colonies the middle colonies and the southern colonies. After you draw color and label this, you're going to count the circle and then you are also going to cut on this dotted line. Only on this dotted line. I don't want you to cut on these other three lines. After you do that, you're going to fold and then you're going to glue. You're going to put some glue here with a glue stick and you're going to take this and glue it over here. So I have one from last year. Um, I've labeled it a little bit different. I have my southern colonies here and my New England colonies here. But this is what it kind of looks like. Okay. So my southern colonies, I've got some slaves. I've got, I've got cash shops. I've got the, got the bird. Middle colonies and some notes Take about notice. it. And then I've got the, got the New England colonies. And after you, you cut out on that dotted line, you're going to fold so that it can fold easily. Okay, and then put your glue, glue here, and then you glue it on top, and it makes a 3D sort of a stand-up, um, a stand-up mm, diorama, maybe, I guess, uh, to help you uh, review and recall and use your notes to determine uh, things that are, that are important to know about each of the three regions. So get that done. Um, you're also going to be filling out a couple of charts um, because on your test, remember the main, the primary objective for this unit, this unit is to describe the differences between the New England, the middle, and the southern colonies, those three regions, and, and it about religion, uh, the people, their economies, um, yeah, all of it. All of it, okay? So get this done and then take a picture of it and attach it to your assignment to turn it in. All right, thanks. Um, this video is actually from a previous year, correct? And and so that means that this, this is uh, something that she had already had been sending out. And I'm not exactly sure, was it only for the, the the students to see that was their parents also no that was just for students that was just uh what she was showing as, as an example to the students in the class 
Okay. So um if you can go ahead and explain the story of how you end up getting it and what happened with that. Okay, well, shortly, um the kids are going to distant learning now. So the teachers have videos, I'm sure everyone's familiar with it on how to do the work and what they expect. Um as the teacher started to describe what she was expecting from the students, she was like, well, I drew a photo last year, and this is kind of what I expect, because it was over the three, uh, three colonial regions, southern New England and the middle colonial regions. So she wanted them to draw a picture and then to draw the words um, relating to the picture, like cash crops, corn, tobacco, sugar, things like that. Did so, we tell them what, what grade this is? No, this is the fifth grade. This is a fifth grade, fifth grade student. Um, so my daughter is thinking that she needs extra supplies to do the work. So I'm asking her, you know, let me see and maybe I can help you. So as I get to looking at the video, you know, the lady goes through the example and she says, hey, I have one I want to show you that I did last year. So this is what to expect. Now here on the Southern portion, I have slaves, I have cash crops, and I have a big economy. Um, on the New England portion of the little diagraph, it had a couple other things. And for the middle colonies, it had a couple other things. But on the slaves, it just, it, it drew my attention because that was like the only thing that she had drew physically on the southern colonies portion so i said well hold on let me see i said is this these supposed to be the slaves and since these ipads are like designated from the school they have them to where they're locked down you can only do so many things on it so i really couldn't download the video to examine it so i took a screenshot of of the portion right there her little diagraph and then as i was able to zoom in on it i see i think i see something and the people that i show it to they think they see something too and now my my concern is that if you just look at the video or just hear and not really pay attention to it you wouldn't even notice it because i reached out to um, one of the teachers up there at the school that is a black lady and I shared this with her and she felt the same way. So the very next day, the principal ended up calling me and then the principal pretty much kind of wanted to just kind of rub it under the rug to say that, you know, this lady has black family members, so on and so on. And I'm, you know, I'm just listening and I'm thinking to myself, well, if she has black family members, why would she draw black people in this manner? You know, so we're going over. She she kind of just kind of wanted me to forget about it and let it go. But I really didn't want to because I know it's a little racist. It's very racist and it was all done intentional. So what I would like to do is just show you the video and show you the picture where I had took a screenshot of it. And whatever you think, you know, whoever sees this, whatever you think, then, you know, maybe we agree or maybe we'll disagree. That's basically it. Okay, this school, um, what uh, city and state is Oklahoma City, in? Oklahoma. Okay, and this teacher is Caucasian, yes, correct? Yes, her name is uh, Laura Hardy, H-A-R-D-E-E. -E. Okay, so did you bring this to the um, principal or the superintendent of school? Yeah, matter of fact, I did. I, I, the principal called me the next day, and me and her had maybe like a 20-minute conversation on the phone. And like I said, she was just really trying to sweep it under the rug and saying, no, um, you know, the teacher isn't racist, and she's known her for eight or ten years. And, you know, she really didn't want me to press the issue. And is just is try the principal to, Caucasian, too? The principal is also Caucasian. Yeah, in at this school, excuse me, at this school, um, as far as the educators, there's really there's only one black educator, and that's the that's my daughter's homeroom teacher. But 
you know, they might have like a black cook and a black janitor or something like that, but there's no, so, but I actually called the superintendent about three days later and spoke with, like, I guess it might've been her secretary or something. And um, she took my information down and kind of took a little brief story down and the lady was supposed to call me back and she's never called back. So I kind of just wanted to give them all a chance to do something, say something, and, you know, just bring this to the forefront and see, I want to see what they're going to do about it. Because in the, with the climate that we're in, I think that they shouldn't be coming from a fifth grade teacher that's actually sitting here. I mean, I understand that blacks are going to experience racism in American schools. I, I mean, I get it, but whenever you, are this blatant with it and you're just getting away with it, I mean, it kind of sends a different signal. To right, it. it's like you're going up and beyond. Now, the brother contacted me and I was able to actually review the video and was able to take the screenshot and actually zoom in on what the thought process was that went behind this. Um, what was it? It was Great Plantation. Large, large. So, so at the top of the page, and we're going to show you guys this. At the top of the page, it says "large plantation," right? So, uh, she positioned these slaves in a particular way, so that the slaves landed on letters that had that were dropping down, right? And it appears that these slaves are hanging from the letters, right? And the slaves was positioned. It wasn't like um, it was it was uh, spaced out exactly. It was spaced out in a way that it landed on these particular letters. You understand? And and the, the most telling part about the photo is that the way she elongated the A in order to make the bottom of the A land on the neck of one of the slaves. And if you look at the other A's in the picture, they're not. They don't have this elongation as the others. You understand, so we we we're we're taking this as this is something that was intentionally done and thought out. You understand, um, for a teacher to be uh, to have immediate contact with 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 children of color, and you're methodically creating this thing. You understand, uh, and then giving it to them. You understand. We feel that we're it's an outrage. You understand. Uh, well, let me let me let me ask, let me ask a, a a question just real quick to uh, 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 Priest Zabak here for a minute. A uh, uh, Priest, let me ask you a question, Zabak. You know, if you if you can hear me, you probably got your thing turned down off. Do you guys have a school for children? You know, in in, in your camp, do you have one? No, right now we just uh, purchased about 30 acres of land in Georgia, and we plan on building a school on that land. That will be our first school for our children, but we just purchased that land in Georgia. Okay. Do you have teachers that's kind of set up already to start the school? Because the reason I'm asking that question is most of the children right now are doing uh, virtual. Even my little girl, you know, she, she goes to an NOI school, and they're doing uh, virtual right now, right? Uh, zoom or whatever and um so do you think that do you guys have the curriculum in place already or you just kind of purchase the land we have we have to pur we purchase the land we have to do things in steps mm -hmm. but um we do have teachers we have members of the body of hoi that are professional school teachers that once we're at their point they will be making that transition to become teachers for the congregation Okay, and the reason I'm asking is because what that brother's dealing with and many other black parents have dealt with, these people aren't equipped to teach our children at all because right. they, 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 they're full of too much evil and white supremacy, and it usually comes out. And they, and, and they strategically place the white supremacist uh, female. 75% right. of the public school teachers are the white supremacist female, and it's done by design, okay? Right. And, they, and you got to look at it. 55% of them voted for Trump and his racism, okay? Right. So with that being said, I always look at, yes, it's wrong. Yes, we get upset by that. But the solution is to pull out black children out of those 
you know, teachers' hands and that school system hands and taught by, you know, your camp, taught by the teachers in, in, in your community. That's why I, I wanted to click you and ask you that question. Right. Let me say something real quick on that too, Brother Phil, before we um give it back to the brothers. Um, Another solution to that is, which I teach brothers and sisters all the time, I'm going to give one quick verse. This is uh, Proverbs 22 and 6. Proverbs 22 and 6. Another good solution to that is always bring your children home and sit them down and teach them yourself so you can filter out what's being taught in the school system and you can get that balance. That's a solution until we're able to set up our own actual schools. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So the onus is also on us because we're not together like we should be as a people in this society where you we can produce the millions upon billions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases to set up our own schooling system. So our job is also to teach our children these law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High and teach them about their history when they're at home too to kind of balance out and filter out the lies, the racism, and things that are learned in a, a regular public school system. That's another way to phase that out also. And I can also say that when I was growing up in the school system, I can blatantly see the racism. And I always wondered to myself, why are these white people from suburbs? I understood that in second, third, fourth grade, because I said, these people don't live around us. They don't live with us. How come they're coming from Long Island, New Jersey, the tri-state area? I grew up in New York City, Brooklyn, East New York. Why are they coming from so far to teach us? I never understood that as a child. But as I got older, I realized the institutionalized racism that Esau has to keep upon us from the days of slavery till mm -hmm. now to keep us in check as a people, to keep us dumbed down and not on that level where we can rise up and self-educate ourselves. So that's just another solution to that issue. But definitely, we have to start working on our own schooling system. And I yield the floor. All right, brother. So, so, so now you said uh, Zabak says that you know they they purchased thirty acres of land. Of course, we do. You know, we know things are in steps. Um, but one thing he did touch on is that teaching your own children. Now, you know, if this school does not do what's right by you, are you prepared to say, you know what, forget that? I'm yanking my kid out of the school, and I I'll uh, homeschool. I will find a program. Uh, or something. I mean, are you prepared to do that if they don't do right by your child? Well, the the situation is this, right? When you are um, when you when you go into a family, you have to examine the dynamics of the family. So, if you let's say you're a single father, right? You're a single father and you're working, right? And and you have to set up parameters so you can provide financially for your family, and you're doing it yourself. Right. That makes things difficult to make those particular changes that you need to make an actual impact in the lives of your children. As as the elder said, we are working toward to make those provisions. You understand? But we are behind. We're behind the eight ball when it comes to trying to get caught up on just surviving in, in, right. in the system that we find ourselves in. Man. Right. So it makes it very difficult for. OK. Let's go ahead. We're going to pull you out of school. So now how I'm going to get to work. You understand how I'm going to do what I need to do to provide for them if they're not going to school. You understand how they, they're, they're at home, but they don't have the right supervision at home because I'm a single dad. So so we want to take these steps, but we're really behind the eight ball when it comes to these things. Yes, I know a lot of black people have the, have those issues. Um and trust me, I, I know. But at the same time, what would be the solution? Because subjecting our children to racist teachers, to me, is abusive. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if the school don't fire her, which if, if enough pressure get on them, they would get rid of her. Um, that That's for sure. Uh, but 
what what's the what's the next step? What did what did they say? Because you know, I, I'm at a point, brothers, that I've talked about these people for years. Oh, look what they're doing to our children. They're suspending our children for their hair. They're doing this to our children, doing that to our children. But then I, now I'm at a point, I'm like, look, we know who these people are already. We know they're evil. We know. Y'all be in the streets all the time preaching about this wicked Babylon system. Yeah, y'all know. I mean, I ain't got to tell y'all anything. So what would be the solution to the problem? That's, 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 something that, that's why I'm at it, it with everything. What's the solution? Well, we're, we're, the solution is the steps that we're taking to, to, to build these schools and, and, and try to galvanize our people to come together. You understand? But, but at the forefront, listen, they're presenting to us this, this so-called, you know, being equal. You understand? This so-called fairness. So we, we want to hold them accountable for that. If, if, if this is what you're presenting to our community, you're saying that you're fair, you're saying that you're decent, and, and if mistakes happen, no different with the police department. If a police officer makes a mistake, we want you to, there should be some, rep, there should be, a, you know, some, some actions taken against that police officer, just as it should be actions take, taken against these teachers that are making these mistakes. While we're also in the process of transitioning to get our children out of these schools, you understand, we want to, we want to call them out on what they're doing. So, 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 you know, they can, you know, be held accountable to their word. If this is what you're saying, and this is what you're pre pre presenting to our community, then follow through on what you're saying. Yeah, I, I agree with holding people accountable. That's, that's what we try to do every day is apply that pressure. And like I said, that video in itself, you know, based off of what you guys are saying, um, I'm just not even liking the description of it, because like I said, I believe that the teachers that who should be teaching anything about the transatlantic slave trade should be black teachers. Um, not, not those kind of teachers because we have full fledged white supremacists, you know, in schools. Um, well, we just covered a video the other day of a, uh, white supremacist pediatric doctor that, that elbowed a black woman, um, on the trail and called her N word and, and he's treating black children at a pediatric hospital. So these people are everywhere. And, you know, th that's why, just my opinion, you know, these people don't want to get along with you and me. They don't want to. They have proven that time and time again. And I just look at our black children as just precious, man. I mean, that's that's our future. That's, you know, we got to protect them at all costs. So that's why I just kind of ask them those questions. And yes, hold them accountable. I'm with you. 100% hold them accountable. But y'all read the scriptures. You, you, you know holding them accountable. They, they, they were too wicked. <laughs> you know this, like that. That's why I'm coming right. to talk about with it a little bit harder than maybe the average black person, because y'all know who these people are. Y'all know we, y'all on the street corners every day preaching to them. Yeah. Uh, can I, can I say one thing on that, brother? Phil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, listen, I want, I want to go back to what uh Yeremiah was saying about the single fatherhood. So. We have to understand one thing, going back to what I said, just because we don't have certain things set up as a people as of yet, don't mean we still can't fight them and do what we have to do. So I go back to saying, even if, let's say in the case of the single parent that has to make a choice, whether do I, do I homeschool my child or do I get out there and make the bread and butter that we need to survive? But in that case, going back to back, so what I was saying, even if you have them in the public school system, it's your job to teach them at home. They're right. not in the public school system 24 hours a day. They're in the public school system maybe for an average of eight hours a day. Maybe some more, maybe some less if they have after school programs. But it's your job on evenings, weekends, the Shabbat, Sundays, whatever. Sit down with your child and teach them. Even if you can't homeschool them, still teach them so it can filter out the lies that they've been taught and that they're still being taught in this school system so right. they can know. You might have your child go to school and be like, that's not accurate, teacher, according to such and such history, because you're teaching them right at home. So it's still a battle. It's still steps, and it's still things we can do to fight this system, even while even being a part of it. So the single father or parent that doesn't have a choice but to have their child in the school system because they got to work, they got to provide. They're not rich. If they make that choice to homeschool that child, then how are they going to uh, take care of that child financially? 
Right. All right. But you can still teach that child at home. Take that hour in the evening. We know it's a sacrifice. You tired from work. The child is tired from school. But take that hour in the evening after dinner. Take that half an hour. Ask your child, what did you learn in school today? Go and visit your child class. Sometimes when my children were in school physically, everything is, for the most part, is virtual. Now, I pop up at the school. Hey, let me sit in the class for uh, five, 10 minutes. Let me see what y'all learning. What curriculum you going over today? So there's other defense mechanisms that we can set up that we can still do. Let me just read this real quick in Sirach chapter 30 and verse 3. Um, Ecclesiastes 30, verse 3, it says, He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. So even with having to have our children in these public school systems for one reason or another, we don't have the finances to build a school right now. We're not together as a people. We don't have enough educators. We don't have enough people with the cojones, for lack of a better expression, right. to rebel against the system. That's another thing. The cowardice is real bad. Nobody wants to fight. So when all else fails, you have to teach at home, even if you send your children out to the school system every day because you got to work, you got to pay your bills. We know this man is the devil. They Satan. They hate us. And that term, like Brother Phil was saying, from the hospitals and everything, that term, institutionalized racism, is in every facet of this system. Right. From school system to religion to hospitals to sports, every facet of this system, that institutionalized racism is there. So it's our job. It starts at home. All the lies and wickedness that our children encounter when they go out into this world, you got to filter it out when they come home. Even if you're not able to keep them home, when they go out amongst the public, it's your job to filter the meat from the bone, like we say. Teach them what's right from what's lies. No, when you go out there, such and such. So they know how to deal with the public when they have to deal with the public because they're getting that teaching at home. So I just want to reiterate on that point because that's a good, that's an excellent point that Brother Jeremiah brought up. A lot of times it's a financial thing. It's a lack of unity. It's like I said, it's cowardice. All right, people are, are scared to stand up. You'd be amazed. Even uh, we spoke about this before, Brother Phil, like the backlash we get from some of our own people because they are mesmerized at the mere fact that we can even stand on a street corner and tell these people to their face that we know they're evil and wicked and we know what they're doing to our people. And we're coming back to the laws of the Most High spiritually first to counter what they're doing. And then we have to implement the physical measures to help us better survive as a people in these last days. And I yield the floor. Yeah, man. Um, the thing is, is uh, you know, I commend this brother for, uh, you know, because like I said, his brother is a single father. And he's taking care of four children on his own, man. And he he's seen something and 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 something that's extremely offensive and something that needs to be called out on, something that needs to be addressed because this is not the first year that she used this particular model. She's gonna continue, she's gonna use this same model next year with another family, right? Another, another generation of fifth graders, right? And passing this off. And, and do it as, as much as she can as long as she's getting away with it. You understand? It's very subtle. It's very subliminal. You understand? And for this brother to be able to stand up and say, hey, man, we, you know, we're not going to stand for this. We are concerned with what you're doing to our children. Yeah, and, that, and that's how they mess with our children's self-esteem. And that's what they, that's, you know, the school system teach them to, to, to have self-hate for themselves, hate their hair, hate their skin hate everything because they always trying to teach that we was nothing but slaves. That's our history. Or it took, you know, Abraham Lincoln to free us. And I mean, it's, it's just indoctrination system. And, 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 you know, first, and I want to say that I commend the brother for, you know, being with his children, you know, doing it by himself. A lot of brothers, like I said, unfortunately, they don't want to step up some of them, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they just want to like, Oh, well, they, they, they're her or whatever. So that's even just commendable. And, um, you know, your situation, you know, you got the sisters out there raising kids by themselves um, and they can definitely have the same story uh, that you have. Um, but well, let me ask you another question. 
Um, because like I said, it, it just, like I said, I don't like, you know, when our children being treated that way. Um, have you posted, you know, the, the video and different things on social media yet uh, outside of telling us about it? Have you posted it maybe there that they can start being shared uh, on like Twitter and Instagram, place like that? Well, the only thing that I did post was the screenshot that I took and I kind of left it up to people to get what they saw. I just posted it up, said a couple of words, said, take a real good look at it. Let me know what you see. And, um, you know, the people that replied to it, they were offended by it. OK. All right. And yeah, like I said, I want to make sure you guys send us that email us that and uh, make sure we see and then that way we can share it as well and get and get people's opinion. But just, you know, if, if your spirit don't feel right about it, I always tell a parent, your spirit don't feel right about it. Then, then, you know, you know, it's something you need to address. Um, so you told the principal and everything. So what are they going to do about it? <laughs> um, I don't even think they're going to ever even call me back or want to talk about it again. Um, I think we had our talk. Um, what was a little weird about it is the day she called, she was saying that she started off the conversation about telling me about the distant learning changes that was about to happen. And so I didn't, I didn't even know that it was about the teacher, right? So she said, started telling me about the distant learning. And um, then she said, and then, uh, you know, pretty much she brought up the teacher. So now we're talking about that. And then toward the end of our conversation, she says, uh, well, you know, that was the main thing that I wanted to call you about and talk to you about the distant learning. You know, and I said, oh, yeah, I kind of laughed. And I was like, oh, yeah. So your main reasoning for calling me was to talk about the changes on the distant learning. It wasn't about to address the racist teacher that you employed. You know, she's like, oh, no, see, you're mixing up my words. You know, let me start over. And my main reason for calling is to talk to you about Mrs. Hardy and secondary. Oh, she switched it up. Right. Secondary, <laughs> it's about, you know, um, the distant learning changes. And I was like, oh, OK, well, thank you. That sounds a lot better. But thank you. Um, um, thank you. So. I, I, I know that was a tactic to throw you off, like say talking about distance learning, because you know sometimes you can throw people off by just mentioning something right. else and <laughs> kind of forget. Um, right. I think that was the plan too to talk to me about that, and it wasn't nothing real important. It was like, hey, are you going to keep your kids home? Um, if you're going to keep them home for the rest of the year, I need you to go on the website and sign your name to it. I said, oh, okay. You see what I mean? So it wasn't nothing. Yeah. Um, Right. Yeah. Cause see, when it comes to punishing them, see, they don't like to hear the talk of punishment and right. um, you were wanting something done. So, okay. If she's not going to do anything, then the next step would be the superintendent of the uh, school. Yeah. So are you going there next? Well, I went there. Like I said, I waited maybe three days, two or three days. And then I called there and then um, I, I didn't get to speak directly to her. I guess it was her secretary or something. So she took my name, my number, and pretty much a brief overview of what my concern was. So once I never got that call back, it's been at least a week now, but I never got that call back. I just figured, you know, this is just a chain of events where people don't want to see anything by this. You know, like the people that I'm telling, once you kind of see what's going on, you don't want to see what's going to come out of this. You don't want to, you know what I mean, ruffle no feathers. So you're going to go ahead and kind of push it out the way because I couldn't believe the teacher didn't, I mean, the superintendent didn't call me back after I gave her just a brief overview of what the problem was. Oh, I can believe it because that's, that's just how right. they, how they <laughs> roll. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, so basically, yeah. yeah, you have to, yeah, you're doing it this way. It's the only way to get their attention, basically. Right. It's going to right. social media and, and let, letting people on social media know um you know what's going on so um if you if your superintendent was to be listening right now let's say if she's to listen what would you say to her i would say um please look into it please do the right thing i mean it's only right uh your teacher that y'all employed the school system um if the roles are reversed um i'm sure because i know personal friends that are like black teachers that they can't teach things and say certain things about certain parts of history, but we teach, you know, 
all about the black person's demise in America. Um, you know, take some action. You should be just offended as I am as the parent. Right. All right, and in, in, in the in box for for before we wrap up, brother. Um, you you know, you, we want to uh, leave us with anything because um, this is something that, like I said, we see all the time with our children. Like I said, for me, I just when it comes to my little one, I, I did not want to have her indoctrinated by these people. But I mean, what say you? If we wrap up. All right, um, real quick, I just want to go back to um, getting the story out there. So, like I said, initially, Brother Jeremiah came to me, and um, he had knew that I had been on your show before, and he mentioned it to me, and I said, yeah, this is right up uh, Brother Phil's alley. He's always talking about stories like this in the community, which, um, you know, I get a lot of my news about the people from, of course, platform like yours, and I thank brothers like you for bringing forth a lot of these stories that are not told. They're not told out there. So you are a perfect candidate for this, along with our voice that we already have on social media. So this story will be getting out there, but um, you were one of the first brothers that we thought of through the spirit. And um, we just want to thank you for having us on. Uh, I was sort of the connect, <laughs> as we would say in the street, I was the connect, <laughs> you know, but um, to bring this together so we can get this story out there, but it will, we will be putting it out on our different media platforms. Um, once your this video is edited and um, shown, we'll 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 share that all over the place and get this story out there as much as we can. But I do want to thank uh, you for having us on there, and I want to commend I want to commend the brother. Uh, what's your name again, brother? My name is Billy. Billy. Yes. All right. I want to commend the brother Billy again because. This is the type of stuff that needs to be done. If you get a million of our people, you'd be surprised of how a lot of our people stuff doesn't get done just due to silence or conforming. All right, well, you know, uh, I'm just gonna go along with it. And it tells us in um uh first of uh, the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses one and two, to give our bodies as a living sacrifice and be not conformed to this world. Our people have to stop being cowards and get up and do the work, get up and file a complaint, right. get up and connect with other brothers and sisters that are crying out about these same things. <clears throat> Let's get these stories out. Let's connect with each other. All right. Don't be conformed to this world. Too many people of our, of our people are scared and they're conformed to this world and they just go along with anything. So I commend the brother Billy as a single father of four children. You know, this is the best the brother can do in the position he's in right now. He's doing as much as he can. And I know if the brother could do more, he would do more for his babies. And um, I feel you, brother Phil, when you say our children, man, our, our children are our most prized possessions. I love my children to life. I love my nation to life, but our babies are our future. So if we don't have certain powers, we can't be defeated. We can't just say, oh, we don't have a school, so we, we don't have a school of our own, so we can't do nothing. No. Take those steps. Put in complaints. Teach your children at home. Sit down and talk to them. And yes, have those tough conversations. Has those, have those tough conversations about racism and letting your children know. Yes, the white man plays the position of the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan on the earth. Yes. Some people might say, don't, don't teach that to your children. No, you got to tell them the reality because you think they care when they send them home a, a homework assignment that says large plantations on it and the A is elongated to be a damn noose with a yeah. stick figure hanging from that noose. And they know children, uh, children draw in stick figures sometimes. So they're targeting right at children. They don't care. So if they're being a devil to our children, should we not tell them they're the damn devil that the Bible speaks of? So these are all the things we have to do. It starts at home. The fight starts at home. We must teach our babies, even if we're forced to have them in this system. So I commend all you brothers for coming on here. And the conversation doesn't end here. And before we go, I would like for uh, Brother Billy to name names, the, uh, the name of the school, the city and everything again, the teacher, superintendent, whatever names you're allowed to bring out on social media. I don't know the, all the details of what's behind the scenes. You may not be able to reveal certain information, but 
all the information you can reveal about this story, name names, city, school, district, town, whatever name of the school, number of the school, if the school has a, a, a number. I know in some states like in New York, a school might have a name like George Carver, but then there's also PS 103 or whatever. Any information you can name in closing, brother, so this story can be exposed and we're not tolerating this nonsense. Right. This blatant, blatant, blatant act of racism against our children in these last days. And in closing, I just want to read two quick verses and then I'll yield the floor so we can start wrapping it up. Because this, this has to stop. This is evil as hell and this has to stop. This is on Ezekiel 35 and five to show you, you black, Latino, Native American and Seminole Indian. I just did a video on the racism of the Democratic Party. You think something is gonna change because you voted and you so-called got President elect Biden and Vice President Kamala and it is not changing. Do you know there's a brother, I'm pretty sure you spoke on this brother, Phil, that he's the modern day Emmett Till, what I call down there in Louisiana. They beat that brother's face in. They claim it's a suicide. He drowned in the cornfield. But they beat that brother face in to where he looks like the modern day Emmett Till. And the last people he was seen with was a white couple, an Edomite couple who he got in a car. So I'm just bringing that story up to show you. If they hate our children and it's an ongoing fight and nothing is going to change until we come back to the laws, statutes and commandments of the Most High Yahweh Shai, as believing Hebrew Israelites, keep these commandments and fight this man spiritually, mentally, and when the Lord give us the power to fight him physically. So this is Ezekiel 35 and 5. It says, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword, in a time of their calamity, in a time that their iniquity had an end. They have had a perpetual hatred against us as a people. And they have slain us by the force of the sword, the gun, the chokehold. If they're able to put that noose behind your neck, all these police killings are nothing but modern day lynchings. So to our people, black, Latino, Native American, Seminole Indian of the 12 tribes of Israel, of the, the uh, Hebrew diaspora, you have to understand this man hates you. And he shows it even through our babies. He hates us even through our babies. He shows the hatred. No mercy on our babies. How the hell you send a homework assignment home like that to these children? Because you don't give a damn. That's why. And this is uh, Galatians 3 and 13. And they know Esau knows our history. He know what we've been through as a people. And he knows the mockery that he's making of us when he do stuff like this. Right. All right. Because in our law, we don't have to get it for the sake of time. In Deuteronomy, it tells us that part of capital punishment for the nation of Israel was being hung. And Esau knows that. So they carry that tradition. All right. It, it went back uh, hangings on crosses and everything. Like I tell you in Acts, Christ was um, slew and hung on a tree uh, during the time of the Romans. During the time of the Egyptians, during the time of different empires. When you read the book of Esther, uh, Haman and Ham wanted to have our, our forefather Mordecai hung on gallows. So they know the history of hanging and lynching from slavery up until now. Uh, um, the sister Billy Holiday, Strange Fruit, and the list goes on and on. So why would you put that on a homework assignment with children? Right. Because you don't give a damn. You're a racist bastard. All right, this is Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. And it says, uh, uh, Salaki, excuse me. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. And it reads, Curse, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So they right. know that goes back into Israelite law. That's why during the time, during the uh, time, in the ancient time, we didn't let the bodies hang out overnight. We buried them before the sun went down. What does the so-called white man do? Let your body hang out and rot on the trees for days and months or whatever the case may be to humiliate you. All right, so they know in the law it was a curse and it was part of capital punishment for us to hang from a tree. So they're carrying that all the way up until now and still trying to put that, that uh, psyche in our children's mind. 
all right, you're going to have a homework assignment where you see little stick figures hanging from trees like we did to y'all in slavery. So this is evil, man. And our people have to understand to lift these curses, you got to come back to the law, statute, and commandments of the Most High. Even in Matthew 27, I believe it's uh, 24 and 25, the uh, evil Israelites, the Jews that betrayed Christ, they said, crucify him, hang him. His blood be upon us and our children. So that curse came down upon us in slavery. And Esau knows that. They know our history. But how do we lift that curse? By coming back to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Right. And he'll give us power to teach our children. And eventually, we can start pulling them out of these schools and educate them ourselves. But in a case like Brother Billy, if you just have to have your children in the school system, make sure you teach them and do exactly what this brother did. Keep up with their damn homework assignments and see what these devils are trying to teach them. They they just had um, I wanted to down so I can't feel long winded, but they just I just I gotta mention this. They just had a dress up day in my daughter's school, where they told all the students to wear a mustache. So my wife called the school and said, <laughs> "When you say all the students, do you mean male and female?" They said, "Oh, it's just for fun." No, no, no. Hold on, stop right there. My daughter is not putting on no damn mustache for fun. Right. <laughs> so, like Brother Billy, we got to keep up with what's going on with these homework assignments. I said, listen, we're not having a, a they called it a silly day or something like that. Oh, everybody wear a mustache. Little boys can wear mustaches, yeah, because eventually they'll be men. But my daughter, I got three daughters that's going to school online. My daughter's not putting on no damn mustache because she's not a man. All right, she's a young lady. So these are the things we have to keep up upon and, and, and do every step we can to guide our children and lead them under the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High and with proper parenting. So all praises to the Most High. Yahweh Shai. Um, thanks once again for all you brothers coming on, and I yield the floor. All right, all right, brothers. And with all that being said, um, how, how can people, like I say, if you posted the video on your social media, let people know like how to get to your social media where that video is at in case you see this, they want to go check it out. Let people know. Um, it's just Billy Biggins at uh Facebook. I just have a Facebook. It's gonna be on uh H O R S your code Y A A uh Q O B. On Facebook, it's going to be on our, our, our Facebook page as well. Okay, well, you can make sure that we get um, to send us send us an email um, with, with with that link, and then we'll make sure to you know check it out and let people know exactly how to get there. Well, we thank you, brother, for, like for taking the time, you know, letting us people know what's going on with your baby. Like I say, these people are evil, you know that. Um, I just you know pray that um, the, the 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 school and everything you guys trying to get up and running. ASAP because um you know so we don't have to subject our kids to these issues and problems. Um I'm so sorry, like, brother. I'm sorry, brother Phil. When you finish, can I um share some of those links also? Yeah, yes, you you can share those links. So uh thank you everyone for watching. Uh see you on the next one.